Hey everyone, I'm Arbos here and welcome to a quick video about the Humankind Bolivar update, which is coming out this Thursday, that's June the 9th. That's tomorrow when I'm uploading this. And it's probably the biggest quality of life update Humankind had so far. So I'm definitely looking forward to checking it out. So let's quickly talk about what's being changed. Two of my favorite changes have to do with war. The first one is the voluntary forced surrender. Because normally, when the enemy's war support reached zero, you had to end the war. You had no other choice. But now, with a Bolivar update, you will still be able to impose your demands on your opponent. However, you will not be forced to do it. You will be able to continue the war. But there will be a growing stability penalty involved the longer you wait. So this is one of the best updates and it's something I've been saying since before the game was even released. Because previously, when you were forced to end the war, once your opponent went to zero war support, it led to some really weird gameplay where you didn't want to win the war too hard and too fast. Because if you beat your opponent too hard too fast, you were forced to end the war before taking some of your strategic objectives. Which could even lead to a situation where if your opponent was close to zero war support already, you would actually actively avoid fighting enemy armies. Because if you beat them, that would push your opponent to zero and force the war to end. It was just really, really strange. So now with this update, you won't have to worry about that anymore because you will still be able to continue the war, even with your opponent at zero. And uh, I'll be honest, this was one of my biggest complaints as far as gaming mechanics go, so I'm really glad to see it was changed. But that's not the only change related to war, there is more. The other one, which I really like, which made no sense previously, is the way war support changes work after you win or lose a battle. Because until now, it was based purely on whether you won or lost an engagement. If you attacked a single enemy scout, the war support change was exactly the same as if you attacked an entire enemy army and beat the crap out of it. Which made absolutely no sense and combined with forced surrender, which is also being changed in Bolivar update, it led to some really gimmicky gameplay, to be honest. So now, war support will be based on the losses on each side, which means it won't be nearly as important whether you won or lost a fight, it will be far more important how many units you lost or killed. And that's still not all of it, uh, ransacking enemy districts will now cost the enemy war support, which definitely makes sense. And uh, furthermore, territories under your control, but under enemy's cultural influence, will drain some of your war support each turn, which also definitely makes sense. And uh, actually, there's one more war-related change, new sortie rules. So defenders cannot sortie on the first turn until the attacker chooses to maintain siege. This is a great change, and it was something that was driving me absolutely crazy previously, because since you can't really click faster than the AI, the AI will do it instantly, you basically weren't able to properly attack an AI's city if the AI's intention was to attack you through the sortie option. So now you will get a chance to do that because the defender will not be able to sortie on the first turn. Again, until the attacker chooses to maintain siege. But if you have no intention of maintaining the siege and you just want to attack the city right away, you will be able to do that no problem with this change. So this is a great change. This was driving me absolutely crazy previously. I'm really glad it's being updated. So with all these war-related changes, uh, wars should be more fun, generally speaking, and definitely less gimmicky than they were previously. So next up, we got a few major quality of life updates. And personally, I'm a big fan of any quality of life UI update. So uh, these look pretty damn good to me. First up, we got stability tooltip update. So now when you go into a city and look at the stability tooltip, it will clearly display 
surplus or deficit stability. Because previously it did not. So previously, if your city was doing really well or really poorly, it was a little bit hard to judge how much room you had for further expansion or how much stability you had to add to fix the situation. You basically had to add it up yourself, which could take a while. But now the tooltip will tell you what your surplus or your deficit is. So you'll know whether it's worth even trying to get the city into the positives, for example. Next up, we got a small but important update for infrastructure tooltips. Now they will tell you what the yield gains are going to be from that infrastructure. So for example, if you want to build a lumber yard, which gives you industry on forest and woodland, you now won't have to count how much forest and woodland you have. The tooltip will just tell you what your gains will be if you build it. So uh, that's definitely a, a very welcome change. Next up is another change that has to do with one of my biggest complaints since before release, and this is Civic's unlock conditions. Now you will be able to see what the exact unlock conditions are for each Civic. So really, this is something that should have been there right from the start, in my opinion, but I'm glad it's being changed or updated now. Next up, there are changes to Natural Wonders and the benefits they provide. So now, after Bolivar update, every Natural Wonder will have its own unique bonuses. So uh, that's definitely another welcome change, because having played Solization a lot, I wasn't a big fan of every Natural Wonder being basically the same, and this should make finding Natural Wonders a bit more exciting <laughs> than it was previously. So next up, there are two changes for game setup. You will now be able to change luxury resource distribution setting and choose whether you want it spread, natural or clustered. Because a lot of the luxury bonuses are really, really powerful. Which means that if they are clustered, the player who gets a cluster of a really powerful luxury got a really powerful bonus early in the game especially if that player also built the Hanging Gardens. And honestly, getting a cluster of a really powerful luxury and building Hanging Gardens was easily like a game-winning move. Not in the literal sense, but it could give you such a powerful bonus early on uh, that you would be hard-pressed to lose. And on the other hand, if one of your opponents got it, whether it's an AI or a human opponent, if you are playing multiplayer, they got a really powerful bonus, basically for the entire game. And of course, you can still use cluster placement if you like that, but now there will also be a setting for more natural placement and for spread luxuries. So definitely a good change for game setup. And the other change for game setup will allow you to turn off pollution effects. So now, if you want to create true industrial powerhouses in the late game and not worry about pollution, you can just use clean pollution setting. So that's a good change for sure. And there's one more change which is purely visual. You will now be able to change the look of your administrative centers and give them a more modern appearance. It will be optional, so if you want to preserve your old look, you will be able to do that as well. And finally, the game will now automatically load any mods used in your latest save when launching. So uh, that's a welcome change too. And uh, that's all the big changes coming up in the Bolivar update, which again is being released uh, this Thursday, which is June the 9th, that's tomorrow when this video is being published. And I'm definitely looking forward to it. And I'm hoping to see more updates like this in the future. Because some of these quality of life changes were honestly way overdue in my opinion. And War in particular, which I definitely always liked in these kinds of games, was really gimmicky at times and often kind of frustrating. So I'm really glad to see that being addressed. 
Uh, however, that's also the end of this video. So thanks for watching all the way to the end. I appreciate it. Leave a like if you enjoyed it. And uh, I will see you in the next video. Bye bye.